Good morning. Uh, my name is Pastor Eddie Dry, the, the, the Director of Family Outreach Ministries Drug Rehabilitation Center. We want to welcome you this morning to our very first transmission um, on the service. My first uh, message this morning that I would like to talk about is alcohol and drugs a disease. The world has been so indoctrinated with the fact that it is a disease uh, that everybody believes it. But the Word of God says different. I would like to uh, ask the question or pose the question, if it is a disease it is the only disease that is contracted by an act of the will. It is the only disease that requires a license to propagate. It is the only disease that is bottled and sold or parceled and sold legally and illegally. It is the only disease that requires outlets to spread it. In the case of alcohol, bottle stores, and in the case of drugs, dealers. It is the only disease that produces revenue for the government. Alcohol brings millions of rands in for the government. It is the only disease that provokes crime. It is the only disease from which we are fined for or, 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 or jailed for. It's the only disease without germ or virus cause for which there is no human corrective medication. It's the only disease that requires an age limit to contract, especially in the case of alcohol. Drugs has no respect for age or gender. Last but not least, it's the only disease that bars a patient from the kingdom of God unless there is repentance so if you want to uh, listen to this message the rest of this message I believe you'll find it very interesting I believe you'll find it very very uh, enlightening I suggest stay tuned don't switch off your TV. Stay tuned. It'll change your life. Well, first of all, this morning, we just want to greet everybody in the name of Jesus Christ. And we want to especially greet our viewers out there. We're coming here from Family Outreach Ministries in the Drug Rehabilitation Center in the middle of the Karoo, outside Grafton Net. And we trust that you're going to um, enjoy and feel empowered after the message that we are that I'm going to preach this morning and I'm going to speak on a subject this morning that I'm often asked about over the years I've been approached and asked about this thing for so so many times and I hear it so often that people say it Is alcoholism and drug abuse a disease? Is it a disease? People ask me that question because the, the medical fraternal has, has labeled it as a disease. And I, uh, I just want to say this morning emphatically that I disagree with the psychiatrists and the psychologists that say it's a disease and I will prove it from scripture we're gonna just read this one scripture in Galatians 5 verse 19 to 21 I believe that the book that the great psychiatrist and psychologist of the universe wrote is the only book that we can work with 
not man-made or man-written books about theories. Are you all there? Are you ready for me? Galatians 5, 19, 21. Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery. And um, we'll explain later on how this uh, falls under sorcery. Hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murder, drunkenness, Revelries and the like of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. I'm not saying that. The great apostle Paul wrote it, and he got it directly from God. And I'm going to give a couple of references to... The fact is alcohol a disease and drugs is it a disease and I want to ask these questions it is the only disease that is contracted by an act of the will it is the only disease that requires a license to propagate to be spread it's the only disease that needs a license to be spread. We're talking about alcohol here. Or multiply. It is the only disease that is bottled and sold or, or parceled and sold legally the alcohol and illegally the drugs. It is the only disease that requires outlets to spread it. An outlet to spread it. And dealers to spread it. So it's also an outlet. It is the only disease that produces revenue for the government. Alcohol. Big revenue. I've never ever, I don't know, I might be wrong and I stand to be corrected. I've never heard of any, in, any company that produces alcohol that has buried one guy that died of cirrhosis of the liver. Not one. I have never heard of any bottle store that has faithfully, their, their faithful client, when he dies of alcoholism, uh, when his liver collapses and he bleeds to death, that they have sent a card or even a bunch of flowers. I've never heard of that. But it brings big revenue. Big, big revenue. It's the only disease that provokes crime. It is the only disease that is spread by advertising or street talk. Advertising. When we watch the sports or on the side, there is this beer. With a nice head on it. It's the only disease for which we are fined for contracting and or, or, and, or jailed for it. Some time back the, they were confiscating motor cars because people were drunk, driving under the influence. It is the only disease that brings death on our highways and homes, poverty, violence, Neglect and molestation. It's the only disease without germ or virus cause for which there is no human corrective medication. I want to ask the medical guys, if this is a disease, why haven't you developed medication? Or a tablet that I can give to a heroin addict and say, take two tablets three times a day for the next six weeks and you'll be okay. Why can't we do that for a methamphetamine addict? Give him the medication and say, 
If you finish this course, you'll be free. Because it's in the spiritual. It is the only disease that requires an age limit to contact alcohol. You've got to be a certain age to, to, to buy alcohol. But I, I don't know if they've ever asked anybody that comes into the bottle store, uh, could I see your ID, please? Youngsters are drinking from 10, 11, and 12 years old. That 10 to 1, that, that alcohol 10 to 1 comes from their homes. I don't think a, a 10 year or an 11 year will be uh, uh, allowed into a, a bottle store. It is only the disease that requires an age limit to contract alcohol. Drugs has no respect for age or gender. Alcohol or drugs has no respect for age or gender. And young people think when they're 11, 12 years old and they, go, they, they, they get drunk for the first time, they think it's a great joke. It's, a, it's the roller coaster start of a destroyed life. Last but not least, it's the only disease that bars a patient seeing that it's a disease, I call it a patient, from the kingdom of God, unless there is repentance. I found a very, very interesting scripture in Habakkuk. Habakkuk 2 verse 15. You don't have to turn there, I'll just read it. It's a very interesting scripture. Woe to him who gives his neighbor drink. Who pours out your bottle to them and add to it your poisonous and blithing wrath and also makes them drunk that you may look on them, stripped con their stripped condition and pour out foul shame on, on their glory. Now I wonder how the alcohol outlets fit into the scripture. Woe to him who gives Drink to those to make them drunk. In my heart, I believe they're going to stand in front of God and they're going to answer one day. I believe it in my heart of hearts that that's what's going to happen. You know, yesterday, coming, coming back from Port Elizabeth, and I drove through our small town, Graf Renet, I was surprised to see that time of the afternoon all the bottle stores open. I want to go as far as saying that there was more bottle stores open than supermarkets. Sad. It's sad. Where there's alcohol and drug addiction, there is poverty. There's no money for food, but there's money for drink. And Ephesians 5 verse 18, it says, And do not be drunk with wine, in which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit. Our world is filled with many different opinions concerning the abuse of drugs and alcohol. The most popular thinking is that those who are drug addicts or alcoholics have a disease. However, according to the Word of God, the, the Bible, drug abuse and alcoholism is not a disease, but a sin. Bottom line, it's a sin. God has warned us about the wisdom and the philosophies of man. He warns us about the wisdom and the philosophies of man that's going to come and lead, lead, lead us astray. Beware lest anyone cheat you through deceit according to traditions of men, according to basic principles of this world, and not according to Christ, Colossians 2 verse 8. He also said, your faith should not be in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. 1 Corinthians 2 verse 5. With the philosophy of disease, men tells addicts that they are not responsible 
for their actions. Five minutes before I came to church this morning, five minutes before my phone rang. And it was past time sitting in a Goodwood prison. My parents don't want to pay the bail. Don't you want to help me? Five minutes before I came to church. But the world, world tells us people. If I say us people, I'm, I include myself because I'm also an ex-addict. That we're not, we're not responsible for our actions. We are. The world tells them that they are hopeless. There's no hope. I wanna, and, I, and I want to say this this morning. And I want to say this to our viewers. That there is hope. Amen. There's mothers and fathers that are watching. That have got children that are on drugs or bound in alcoholism. And do not know what to do. There's hope. The Lord Jesus Christ can set you free. Can set your son free. Can set your daughter free. He tells them, the world tells them that they can never be cured of their disease. And they must label themselves as addicts forever. I don't believe that. I've been clean 18 years now. And I don't label myself as an, an addict anymore. I'm an ex-addict. Set free. By the Lord Jesus Christ. By the power of the Holy Spirit. And by the blood that flowed at Calvary. It is your belief that such addictions result from disease. Please consider the following. What other diseases or destructive process of the body are self-inflicted and by choice? One more, except HIV AIDS. It's by choice. We choose. Somewhere along the line, we made a choice. It is not true that a substance abuser always has a, cho has a choice not to partake. Is it not true? We have, we have a choice. We have a choice. There is no question that the body, that the body learns to crave abusive substances. But this can be overcome. We can overcome it. It's true. When a heroin addict or a, 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 a amphetamine addict or tuck addict, when you go through those withdrawals, when you have those pains and your mind is mixed up and you're thinking all sorts of things, it's true that you're going through that and that you're craving. But the Lord Jesus Christ can take you through it. We've had many cases here where the guys we just prayed for and they came through. That they turned around and they said they've never experienced this before. Never, never, ever felt like this before. Because the worst thing for any addict is the withdrawals. Even when withdrawal abusive symptoms will result, the person always has two choices. When it happens, you've got two choices. You can either decide to take your stuff and run and go and use again. Or you can endure the withdrawal symptoms. You can endure it. And the Lord will come alongside and make it easier for you. Make it light. But you've got to believe. You've got to have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. You've got to believe. That he's going to do it. You've got to believe with everything inside of you that he's going to do it. Even if you do not believe in the disease philosophy. You may, you may believe that drugs and alcohol abuse is some kind of physical addiction that even God cannot help some people to overcome. I've heard that. People said that to me. They told me that. 
said, they don't believe that. I don't believe that God can help me to overcome this thing. The creator of the universe. The one that created each and every one of us. The one that we are precious to. The one that when he created us, he had a special plan and a purpose for us. The manufacturer cannot help us to overcome. Not true. You may think this because even though abusers desperately want to stop, they cannot. Every one of you here sitting here has at some stage in your life said, I really want to stop. I don't want to do this no more. You might have said that to yourself every day. Every day. Today I'm stopping. But then you find yourself there again. Today I'm stopping. And you find yourself there again. I said that also. Also said that. Today I'm stopping. Last drink. Won't have another one. When I find myself, I'm sitting there again with the oaks. Knocking it back. How did I get you? How did I get you? I made a decision. I made a decision. And, the, uh, and this, this history, this story that I'm telling you, is centuries old. Centuries old. This is not a new thing to God. Drug addiction and alcoholism is not a, a new thing to God. It's been around for thousands of years. To begin, you must realize that we are all sinners by nature. This is to say we all fall short. We all fall short of God's glory. Romans 3.23 Oh, we miss the mark of God's perfect plan. That's what it means. If we really go and look at it in the original translation, it means missing the mark. You missed the bull. Psalm 18 verse 30 says that. Although few of us like to say we are sinners. Very few of us like to say that. I'm a sinner. And it's hard. It's hard for us when we come out of substance abuse to, to, to get to a place to say, Lord, you know what? I'm a sinner, man. I'm a sinner. I need you in my life. I need you to help me to overcome this. Romans 3.23, or we miss the mark of God's perfection. Romans 5.12 says, just as through one, uh, one, one man, Adam, sin entered the world and death came through sin, thus death spread to all men because all sinned. We've got to blame Adam for it. It's in our bloodline. And as I often say, sin is nice. For a little while, then it kills then it destroys. Destroys the person. Destroys homes. Destroys families. Rips them apart. The scripture tells us that we inherited our sinful nature from Adam. As Adam's descendants we are prone towards sin. God's word tells us that we, that we serve the sinful nature by seeking to satisfy our physical desires. That's all it is. We want to satisfy our physical desire. Romans 7, 25. In Galatians 5, verse 19, as we read early on, there is a list of physical desires that are sinful. A whole list of them. Three of the listed items are idol worship, idol, idol worshipping, sorcery, and drunkenness. When we are bound by those substances, we are bowing down to another God. We can't live without it. Got to have it every day. 
irrespective of what it takes or what, what you need to do. Steal, rob, carry on. But you've got to have it. Satisfy that desire. And we're bowing down to another God. We're placing that thing above God. And anything that you place above God is an idol. Any or all of these sins can prevent a person from entering the kingdom of God. Let us look at these things, beginning with idol worshipping or idolatry, and how they relate to a person who abuses drugs. An idol is anything that takes the place of God in our life, as I said earlier. It has given our, our, our priority and attention. This would include anyone other than the God, Jehovah, the Creator. We bow down. I often say to you guys, you bow down to the cigarettes. Bow down to it. It's got you bound. It's got you with barbed wire. He's bound you. And every time you take a suck on that cigarette, he bind, turns a little bit more, binding you a little bit more. This would include anyone other than God, as I said. An idol is literally a false god that is served instead of God himself. Drugs and alcohol are false gods that rule the abuser's life. It rules our lives. The word of God says to us, meditate on the word of God day and night. And we ask ourselves, how can I meditate on the word of God day and night? Some guys are even too lazy to read their Bibles. I've got to force them to go to prayer meetings and, and uh, uh, small group sessions. I've got to force them to read. Too lazy to read their Bibles. They, they rule your life. Those who begin as willing worshippers. You know, remember that one time I tried it? You become as a, you, 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 come, you get to a place where you're a willing worshipper. I'm an occasional user. I'm just an occasional user. Very, 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 very quickly. You become a slave in bondage to that God. A slave in bondage. Our God, the Lord Jesus Christ, He says He came to set the captives free. To break, to break every shackle and every bondage. He doesn't come to bind up. He comes to loosen. Now let us look at sorcery, witchcraft. The original Greek word that we translate into sorcery is the same word we translate into pharmacy. And you've heard it before. You've heard me talk about it before. The word is pharmakia. That's the Greek word, pharmakia. Pharmakia is translated in these different ways because some of drug abuses today were abused back in the times of Christ. There's some drugs today that were abused in those days as well. These mind-altering drugs were used by sorcerers and witches to help them tap into the powers of the demonic. And that's why when we get involved with these substances, we open ourselves up to the attack of the enemy. We open ourselves up. Our, our spiritual guard is dropped. And we must be honest this morning that we get involved in things that we never thought we'd get involved in. We sink to a level that we never thought we'd go to. We do things that we never thought we'd ever do. Because He binds us. Over 2,000 years ago, there was a definite link between drug abuse and the occult. This is clearly evident today. 
Because Satanism is growing. It's growing in the world. The world has got to a place where they do not believe that God exists anymore. I've heard it say, your God is dead. He doesn't exist anymore. There's no such a thing as a God. Don't believe it anymore. But I know, I know as I stand here this morning, I know in my heart, I know that there's a God. I know that there's a God that rules this universe. I know that there's a God that sent His Son to Calvary that died for me to set me free from my, from my substance abuse. Who is a drug addict or an alcoholic? Galatians 5.21 describes the person merely as one who practices or do such things. That is, in, that is in Galatians 5. According to the Webster's Dictionary, to practice means to frequent or make a habit of it. But none of us here had habits. Bad habits. And there's other things that come with it, as I said. God has a better plan for your life. He does not want you to be excluded from His kingdom. God wants not one person to be excluded from His kingdom. We make the choices. We choose to go down that road. Because we need something to fill this void that we've got inside. And God created us like that. That void can only be filled by the Holy Spirit. I would like you to take the time just to do, try and do a bit of a study for yourselves. To go and have a look, especially what God's Word says about mind-altering effects of drugs and alcohol abuse. In most cases, reference to alcohol can be applied to drug abuse as well. In most cases. Read, let's read the following verses, Ephesians 5.18. And do not be drunk with wine in which is dissipation, waste, but be filled with the Spirit. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. And if you've given your life to Jesus Christ, you've accepted Him as your Lord and Savior, get filled with the Spirit. Pray that the Holy Spirit fills you from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. 1 Corinthians 6 verse 9 to 10. Do you not know that the unrighteous will not enter the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor, nor adulterers, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetousness, nor drunkards, nor, nor revilers, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. Proverbs 21, 20 verse 1. Wine is a mocker. Intoxicating drink arouses brawling. And whoever is led astray by it is not wise. Maybe we must just go there. Let's, 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 go, let's go to Proverbs 20. Proverbs. Proverbs 20. Let's read that. Wine is a mocker, strong drink, a riotous brawler, and whoever is or reels because of it is not wise. It's sad. It's sad when God comes and He brings you to a place where he wants to deal with you and he wants to help you and he wants to set you free and you don't want, you, you don't want to accept it. You don't want a free gift from God. Free gift from God. Proverbs 23. 
I like this one. Proverbs 23. Do not look on the wine when it is red, when it sprinkles in the cup, when it swirls around smoothly, at the last it bites like a serpent and stings like a viper. But you know what? Proverbs 23 from verse 29. It says, Who has woe? And I'm reading from the Amplified Version. Who has sorrow? Who has strife? Who has complaining? Who has wounds without cause? Who has redness and dimness of eyes? Verse, verse 30. Those who tarry long at the wine, they have redness of eyes. Those who go to seek and try mixed wine. Do not look at the wine when it is red, when it's sparkling in the wine glass, when it goes down smoothly. At last it bites like a serpent and stings like an adder. Under the influence of wine, your eyes will behold strange things. The Amplified says that. And loose woman. It's amazing what alcohol does and drugs does to our minds when we... We get to a place, somebody, somebody that you'll never look at all, all of a sudden looks like Marilyn Monroe. <laughs> it's amazing, eh? How that just changes your mind. And the Bible talks about it, yeah. Loose woman, and your mind will utter things turned the wrong way. Untrue, incorrect, and petulant. Yes, you will be as unsteady as he who lies down in the midst of the sea. I don't know who of you have ever been drunk and lie on your bed and you, and you feel the bed is doing this. You're in the middle of the sea. And they tell you the story, put, hang your foot down. Put your foot on the floor and it'll be okay. That's a lie. It doesn't work. I tried it. It doesn't work. Before I got saved, I tried all those things. It doesn't work. You feel like, like uh, you're in the middle of the sea. Yes, you will be as unsteady as he who lies down in the midst of the sea and as open to disaster as he who lies upon the top of a mast. The mast of a ship. You will say, they struck me, but I wasn't hurt. I wonder, is there anybody here this morning that, that woke up one morning and said, I wonder where these marks come from. I can't ever remember these marks. can't remember these marks. But we're full of scratches and bumps and marks. And it's amazing how God knows about these things. They beat me with a hammer, but I did not feel it. When shall I awake? I will crave and seek more wine again and escape reality. As I said... Alcoholism and substance abuse is nothing else but sin. Sin only. Let's look at Romans 5.12. Romans 5.12 says, Just as through one man Adam's sin entered into the world, and death came through sin, this, thus death spread to all men, because all sin. This scripture tells us, that we inherited our sinful nature from Adam. As Adam descendants, we are prone towards sin. God's word tells us that we serve this sinful nature by seeking to satisfy our physical desire. Romans 7.25, in Galatians 5.19 verse 21, there is a list of physical desires that, that are sinful. Three of these Listed items are idol worship, sorcery, and drunkenness. Any of these sins can prevent a person from entering the kingdom of God. Let us look at these things beginning with idol worship or idolatry and how they relate to the person who abuses drugs. An idol is anything that takes the place of God in your life. 
It is even our priorities and attentions. This would include any, anyone other than God. An idol is literally a false god that's, that serves, that is served instead of God himself. Drugs and alcohol are false gods. They rule the abuser's life. Those who begin as willing worshippers became slaves in bondage. Instead of living for their, cre for their creator and savior, they live for their addiction. The, the scripture declares, clear, uh, sorry, the scripture clearly indicates this is a type of idolatry. Now let us look at sorcery and witchcraft. The original Greek word that we translate into sorcery is the same word we translate into pharmacy. The word for pharmakia is pharmakia, pharmacy, potions making is translated in these, these different ways because some of the drugs abused today were abused back in the time of Christ. These mind-altering drugs were used by sorcerers and witches to help them to tap into the powers of the demonic realm. Over 2,000 years ago, there was a definite link between drug abuse and, and the occult. This is clearly evident today. It is no coincidence that the rise of Satanism over the last 20 years has coincided with the increase and in abuse of mind-altering substances. While not all those who abuse mind-altering drugs are in the occult, it is still obvious that there is a definite link between the two. Therefore, one can conclude from common sense that abusing drugs is a sin. Who is the drug addict or alcoholic? Galatians 5.21 Describes this person merely as the one who practices such things. According to the Webster's Dictionary, the practice means to frequent or make a habit of it. Are you practicing idolatry? Witchcraft? or sorcery, or drunkenness. If you are, God has a better plan for your life. He does not want you to be excluded from His kingdom. He wants you to enter in victoriously through faith in His Son, Jesus Christ, who died at the cross of Calvary, who, was risen, who rose from the dead, and sits at the right hand of Almighty God. And whose blood was shed for you. At this time please establish for yourself. Specifically what God's word says. About the mind altering effects of drugs and alcohol abuse. In most cases references to alcohol can be applied to drug abuse as well. Read the following verses. And take time to give reflective thought to each verse. Or write down in your own words what you think the scriptures are saying about God's view. Ephesians 5 verse 18. And do not be drunk with wine in which is dissipation, waste, but be filled with the Spirit. In Corinthians 6 verse 9, verse, uh, excuse me, Corinthians 6, 9 verse 10. Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor, so, nor sodomite, nor thieves, nor covetousness, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners will enter into the kingdom of God. This is not what I am saying, this is what the word of God says. Proverbs 21 verse 1, wine is a mocker, intoxicating drink arouses brawling, and whoever is led astray by it is not wise. Exclusion from God's kingdom of, uh, or heaven, self-destruction, violence, woes, sorrows, contentions, unexplainable wounds and perversions in the heart 
are just some of the results of alcohol and drug abuse. Galatians 5 verse 19 to 21. God has exhorted man. Excuse me. To be filled with his Holy Spirit. Rather than to be drunk. Ephesians 5 verse 18. The bottom line is that God knows how destructive these sins are to our bodies, our minds, and our families. Everyone that is um, addicted to alcohol or to substances has a terrible, terrible effect on their families. Families are destroyed. Families are ripped apart. Most importantly, sins destroys our ability, our ability to fellowship with God. And to enter into all that He has for, for each of us. Now and eternally. Isaiah 59 verse 3. God knows that our sinful nature separates us from Him. He knows that. And condemns us to eternal death. Romans 6 23. This is exactly why Jesus Christ died on the cross for all of our sins. Once and for all. He paid a price that we could not pay. He paid the price that we could not pay. This is exactly why Jesus Christ died. The Bible tells us that God made himself, himself Jesus, who knew no sin to become sin on behalf of, 2 Corinthians 5.21 of us. God demonstrated His love for us when He punished His perfect sinless Son in, in our place. John 3.16 When Jesus died for our sins, He provided atonement on our behalf. 1 John 2 verse 2 That is why Jesus is the only way a person can come to know God. John 14.6 by putting our trust in Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we can enter into the kingdom of God. It is by faith in Jesus Christ, by faith in His death at the, on the cross of Calvary, by faith that He rose from the dead, and by His shed blood, that we can be saved. We can be set free. We can be delivered. In putting our trust in Jesus, we become what Jesus described as born again. And unfortunately, there are thousands of people sitting in churches worldwide that aren't born again. They are just religious. John, uh, John 3 verse, uh, verse 3 and 2, 6. We are born out of the flesh and in sinful ways, such as drugs and alcohol, and born into the family of God. John 1 verse 12 to 13. The Spirit of God begins to dwell in our life the moment we unconditionally accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior. John 7, 38 to 39. The Holy Spirit then empowers the believer to overcome the works of the flesh. Sin and to walk in the ways of the, of the Spirit, the flesh and the sin that comes with it, and walk in the ways of the Spirit. When this happens, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self control will be evident in our lives. Galatians 5 22 to 23. This is part of, the, of that perfect will God has for each of our lives. However, unless we turn away, we repent. From our sins, we will never know the overwhelming joy that comes from a personal relationship with God. There is one more thing that separates the opinions of man and God concerning drugs and alcohol abuse. Most of today's so-called experts says that if you were once a drug addict or an alcoholic, you will always be one. God's word settles the truth on this matter. He says if anyone is in Christ... He's a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all the new has come. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. And in closing, I want to say this. 
that the stuff that the world is talking about as an illness is not an illness. It is a straightforward sin. If you come to the Lord Jesus Christ, you give your life to Him, you accept Him as your Lord and Savior, you believe in your heart that He can set you free, He'll set you free. He'll deliver you. And I want to say to our viewers watching, you might have a son, you might have a daughter that has a problem with substances. We believe that the Lord Jesus Christ can set her free. He wants to set him or set her free. He wants to do it. I don't know, a name just dropped into my heart here. Uh, there's a mother, n name of Jackie, has got a major problem with her son that's on substances. I want to say this, the Lord is going to save him. The Lord is going to set him free. The Lord is going to deliver him. We must stop leaning our ears out to the world, the world system. The world is crashing around us. Everything is falling apart. And it's prophesied in the Word of God. It's prophesied it's going to happen. We must be focused, keep our eyes on Jesus, read the Word of God. Put it in your heart. Bind it in your heart. Let it fill that emptiness, that space. He will do it for you. He'll do it for you. I think at this point we need just to pray. I want to close the meeting. Let's just pray. Let's close our eyes. We want to pray for those that are battling. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we come to you this morning. And we pray, Lord, that those that are watching, those that are here, Lord, that your Spirit, your Holy Spirit, will take control of their minds and of their hearts. And Lord, that you will set them free. You will deliver them. You will heal them. We believe it. For you paid the price at Calvary. You died on the cross of Calvary. You were buried and raised from the dead. And you're sitting at the right hand of Almighty God. From where you can hear every word that we are saying. And therefore Lord, we trust you this morning. By faith we believe that you'll deliver and set free. Everyone. Lord that calls on your name. Your word says, he who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved shall be delivered. Shackles shall be broken. We honor you, Lord. We glorify you. We praise you. We thank you, Lord, for you, you giving us the opportunity to speak into people's lives. To bring the gospel of Jesus Christ, the healing, the balm of Gilead, to the people. Your people, Lord. Those that you love so much. We honor you. We glorify you. We praise you this morning, Lord, for the awesome work that you are doing in all our lives and those to come in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I hope that there are people out there that have found clarity as far as that is concerned. Because we fully believe in the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, His crucifixion, His death, His resurrection, and His blood that sets us free. I just want to say this, it is also sad um, that even in the churches, many churches, alcohol is looked on as not a serious thing. Because we do find pastors as well as elders consuming alcohol. Coming back to the rehabilitation side of it, it's also very sad for us 
if a child is sent to us or a, a husband or a mother or a daughter is sent to us and um, they are sent for rehabilitation but the uh, parents at home are alcohol consumers. Alcohol is a drug and we can't expect our children to stay drug free if we continue drinking. So I want to appeal to the public out there, those that are watching this, this uh, broadcast, that please refrain from using alcohol um, to help your child or your husband or your wife to overcome their problem. Alcohol is only a gateway to the substance of choice. We thank you for that. You will find on the screen, you will find our numbers, our telephone numbers, um, as well as our uh, website as, as a, and our email. You are welcome to contact us at any time. Once again, I want to say, we fully believe that there is no deliverance from any substance except by the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you. We hope that, and we, we pray that next week you'll be watching our next um, program. I'd just like to take this opportunity to pray for those families that are battling with some, someone, some family member that is bound in substances. Let us just pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we pray for all those people that are bound in substance addiction, in drug addiction. Lord, we take the authority that the Lord has given us over that addiction, over the works of the enemy. We command him to let the ch children of the Lord go. We command him to set them free and let them come to the cross of Calvary. Father, we believe in our hearts that you are the only one that can set us free, for your word says so. And we pray in the name of Jesus that those that are watching will be set free by the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name. Amen.